It is a well-known fact that people can go beyond themselves in extreme situations. The adrenaline in our blood mobilizes the body's energy reserves and increases our willingness to perform. And in threatening situations, adrenaline can ensure our survival by setting our bodies to fight or flight. That's why, today, we're showing you seven people who reacted incredibly in extreme situations. Included are people who reacted extremely prudently despite their own life being at danger, and people who have saved themselves and others from real disasters. So, as always, it's going to be fascinating here at Wonderlane. Australia is known for its rich biodiversity. Besides highly poisonous spiders, snakes, and cute koala bears, there are also between 45 to 50 million kangaroos living here. And it's no wonder that incidents with these animals occur again and again. Greg Tonkins had to experience this on his own body when he was hunting wild boar with friends. Because when they were just with the SUV in the outback on the way, he recognized that a gigantic kangaroo male held straight one of his dogs in a headlock. A dangerous situation for the dog, and the Australian did not hesitate. He ran towards the animal, startled the kangaroo, and thus helped his dog to escape. In fact, now the animal had it in for Tonkins. The kangaroo straightened up, got into fighting position, and was ready to attack. A dangerous situation, by the way, because kangaroos can seriously injure people with their hard kicks. But the animal had done the math without the dog owner. Instead of dealing the blow himself, the stunned male kangaroo received a punch in the face. Greg Tonkins thus managed to escape, but animal rights activists criticized the Australian for the hard blow. Tonkins, who himself works as an animal keeper in a zoo, had to justify himself publicly and explained that he only wanted to defend himself. The animal had apparently not injured itself and finally hopped away. Let's move on to a man whose situation was truly extreme, but different from what most would expect. We are talking about Chuck Feeney. Together with his business partner, Bob Miller, the US American founded the duty-free shops at airports all over the world in 1960. His fortune is said to have been around $8 billion by the 1980s, which, adjusted for inflation, would be around $21.5 billion today. But instead of spending his money on expensive homes, cars, and other luxuries, Feeney avoided the public eye and instead did something incredible. He kept his wealth a secret and lived in extreme frugality. In 1982, Feeney established the Atlantic Philanthropies Foundation and over the next 38 years donated nearly all of his fortune to charities around the world. He donated money to research and had universities built as well as hospitals. Feeney is considered a pioneer of the idea behind giving while living, and he himself didn't see the point of donating his money only after his passing. This generosity also influenced Bill Gates and Warren Buffett when they launched the Giving Pledge in 2010. They wanted to convince the world's richest people to donate at least half of their wealth before they die. On September 14th, 2020, Feeney completed his mission after nearly 40 years, signing the documents to close the Atlantic Philanthropies via livestream. Chuck Feeney, now 90 years old, is not entirely poor though. The former billionaire kept $2 million for himself, but his apartment in San Francisco is still said to be reminiscent of a college dorm due to its simplicity. Let's continue with a woman who radiated absolute calm and composure in an extreme situation. Because when the Spanish woman, Sari Frias, was on her way to work one morning, she ran into a violent storm. 
the roads filled with water instantly and floods formed. Nevertheless, the young woman continued driving, ignoring all the warning signs. Eventually, it turned out the flooding was much worse than she had thought, and her car began to sink. While other people would panic in such a situation, Sari Freya stayed calm and carefully gathered her belongings. She then climbed onto the roof of her car and surfed it as if she were stand-up paddling. A local camera crew happened to be on the scene and released the footage live on television. The young woman was even still on the phone with her relatives, who had seen her on the news broadcast. When the fire department finally arrived, she was still standing on the roof, but there was no sign of her car. Next, we come to 74-year-old retiree Richard Wilbanks. While walking his three-month-old puppy, Gunner, he was suddenly attacked by an alligator. Wilbanks was able to save himself, but the alligator grabbed his dog and pulled him into the water. Without thinking, the retiree jumped in after it and struggled with the animal. In the process, he tore the alligator's mouth apart with all his might and was able to free the dog from its mouth. The amazing thing? The 74-year-old Richard Wilbanks remained totally calm during the whole action and did not even take his cigar out of his mouth. The dramatic rescue was recorded by a wildlife camera that documents the animal and plant life at the lake. By the way, the pensioner does not want to go for a walk there with his dog Gunner anymore. The next man on our list can simply be called an absolute hero. Because Stanislav Petrov is the man who saved the world from a nuclear catastrophe. But what had happened in the first place? Stanislav Petrov was a Soviet lieutenant colonel who, on the night of September 25th, 26th, 1983, went on duty as a substitute at a secret air surveillance center near Moscow. His job was to initiate a counterstrike in the event of an American nuclear attack. The Soviet Union expected a hostile U.S. maneuver at any time, but the night shift was initially uneventful. Shortly before midnight, sirens suddenly wailed. The computerized early warning system reported the launch of a U.S. missile toward the Soviet Union. Petrov should have assumed an enemy attack and immediately initiated nuclear retaliation, but he distrusted the system. Instead, he called his superiors to inform them of a false alarm and lock down the system. And even though the screens showed four more missile launches, he stood by his assessment. By violating government regulations, he may have saved the lives of hundreds of millions of people that night. Because, in fact, the early warning system had incorrectly classified reflections of sunlight as missile launches. Petrov's prudent action, therefore, prevented a military escalation with unimaginable consequences. Let's continue with a man who apparently doesn't let anything get him down. We're talking about Tony Tovar from the small U.S. town of St. Louis. Tovar was sitting comfortably on a bar stool in his local pub on a Wednesday morning in December 2019 when an armed man stormed the bar. Surveillance camera footage shows patrons immediately cowering on the floor in fear as the man robbed the bar and those who were in attendance. Only one person was not impressed by the robber and calmly continued drinking his beer. And that was Tony Tovar. He did not want to be intimidated by the man or to be driven out of his favorite bar and did not let himself be distracted. The situation became more and more curious when the robber tried to snatch the smartphone from Tovar's hand. Tovar refused to hand over his phone and even pushed the attacker away. 
even when he was threatened, Tovar remained calm and lit a cigarette. The surveillance video went viral, and Tony Tovar has since then become known as the chillest man in the world. Finally, we come to a man who is an absolute hero for many people. We are talking about Chelsea B. Sullenberger, who saved the lives of 155 people as captain of U.S. Airways flight in 1549. The Airbus was actually supposed to land in Charlotte, North Carolina, but shortly after takeoff at New York's LaGuardia Airport, both engines failed due to a collision with a flock of geese. The engines burned, thrust was gone, and there was no thought of returning to the runway or approaching another airport. Co-pilot Jeff Skiles handed over the controls to Sullenberger, a former military pilot with more than 40 years of flying experience. And the then 57-year-old knew immediately what he had to do. In a calm voice, he radioed the tower that he wanted to land on the Hudson River in the middle of New York. We're unable. We may end up in the Hudson. Okay, 1529, turn right 280. You can land runway right. 1 at Teterboro. We can't do it. Okay, which runway would you like at Teterboro? We're going to be in the Hudson. And that's exactly what happened. But the maneuver was an absolute failure feet of aeronautical skill, as the Airbus touched down on the water at 250 miles per hour with no major damage. Just a few minutes later, the passengers climbed onto the wings of the plane, and boats brought them safely to shore. And instead of leaving the aircraft immediately, Sullenberger searched the sinking plane again at the very end to make sure no one was left behind. He even acknowledged the thanks of a passenger with a smile and the words, you're welcome. These are the seven people who reacted incredibly in extreme situations. Feel free to write us in the comments which person reacted the best for you. Otherwise, like this video if you enjoyed it, and see you next time, here at Wonderlane.